when we talk about identifying the voice of God, is what I'm hearing from God clashing with my fleshly desires? Or is it agreeing with my fleshly desires? Stay with me. Thank you for joining me this week. And we are having a special time on the whole subject of listening to God. And this week particularly, identifying the voice of God. If it's true that there are many different voices in the world today, and I believe it is, how can I identify the voice of God as against the other voices that are going on around me? We've said already this week that, first of all, the voice of God is always consistent with the Word of God. If I know what the Bible says, then I can be pretty sure if what I'm hearing is of God or not. The problem? Too many of us don't know the Word of God. Yesterday, we looked at the fact that usually when God speaks, what he says is not consistent with human reason. It conflicts with human reason. Now today, is what you're hearing from the voice of God clashing with your fleshly desires? Now this takes us into a totally different realm, because our day and generation is very taken up with satisfying the fleshly desires. Now that is not just sex. Sex is a large part of it, but we have many other fleshly desires. Some of us like to spend money. We like nice things. We like good clothes, and you can go right down the list, and they're all part of our fleshly desires. Is what you're hearing with that voice, that you think the voice of God, is that clashing with your fleshly desires, or agreeing with your fleshly desires. Now, having said that, there are one or two other things to understand. For us, Satan, the world system says, go ahead, gratify your flesh. Do your own thing. Do what pleases you. Do what turns you on. Well, of course, all that is gratifying your fleshly desires. You only live this life once. If you don't do it now, you may never have the opportunity. That's right. He's got you. He's got you absolutely hooked. You say, well, that's right. I'm only going to live here once. What happens if I never do this? I'll never have the experience. Now he's got you. Now, when God speaks, he will never tell you anything just to gratify your flesh or to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Now, I didn't say that there's no fulfillment in the things God gives us to do. Because first of all, God gave us desires, and God gives us things to fulfill those desires. But he doesn't give us anything simply to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And if you hear a voice telling you that there's something you should do that is purely to fulfill the lust of the flesh, that's not God's voice. The second thing is, know that God is for fun. God gave us a sense of humor. God gave us laughter. He wants us to enjoy our lives in Him. That still doesn't alter what I said. He never gives you anything purely to fulfill the lusts of your flesh. So be careful of the voice of Satan in this area, because he can get us hook, line, and sinker. We've heard of young couples who came to a minister friend of mine, and they said, we've been praying, and God's telling us we should sleep together before we're married. That was not God. But it certainly lined up with their fleshly desires. That's exactly what they wanted to do. He never tells us anything that will give us instant flesh gratification. That is not God. All right, you say, Richard, what does God do? When God speaks, he will tell you things that will fulfill your spirit. Now, that's different. He will tell you things that build up your spirit. He will tell you things that satisfy the yearning of your spirit. And interestingly enough, if you have a good marriage, it will fulfill your spirit. It will fulfill the deep yearning of your spirit because a marriage relationship is not just physical. A marriage relationship is also spiritual. Therefore, if what is happening in your life is truly of God, you will be fulfilled totally, completely, and absolutely. 
And so much of what the enemy's got us on today is to fulfill our flesh quickly. It's lust. And many, many Christians are not seeing this. And if we don't see this, we can get caught and we can hear the wrong voice and think we're hearing God and we're hearing something that is absolutely demonic. Now listen to what Paul says. And I'm going to read to you from Galatians 5, verse 16. And he says to us in that verse, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Well, you say, what are those? Verse 19. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery. Now that's just too much drinking, too much eating. Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, isn't that fascinating? What a list. Go over that again when you get home. Galatians 5, 19. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what the Spirit produces. So what are we saying? Well, just a minute. If God is speaking, what he says will fulfill my spirit. What fulfills my spirit? The fruits of the spirit that I've just talked about are fulfillment of the spirit. And if you have peace and you have joy, your spirit is going to be satisfied. That yearning of your spirit. If you're filled with the love of God through Jesus Christ, your spirit is satisfied. And so much of the lust of the flesh the gratifying of the flesh is passing. It's here. It's gone. It's only momentarily. And yet the world has us so hooked on that. I've got to do that. I've got to have that. And it is flesh, flesh, flesh. Now remember what I said to you. The things of the Spirit do not preclude fun. I find I have more enjoyment with the people of God than I could ever have in the world. We can enjoy one another in Jesus Christ and do so in the Spirit. But there has to be a unity, and there has to be a freedom in Jesus, and we can enjoy ourselves. We've got together in groups in Jesus Focus Ministry, and we've had more laughs than I've had in all the world put together, because God's people should be fun. If you're a straight lay, straight-faced Christian, I don't think you know Jesus very well. Did you hear that? If you're a straight lay, straight-faced Christian, I don't think you know Jesus very well, and I'm not sure he's ever had the opportunity to really set you free. I don't think your spirit is absolutely free. If your spirit was free, you'd be having fun. You'd be enjoying yourselves in the things of the spirit. And there are far too many sad Christians about. No wonder the world is put off. Who wants to become a Christian and become glum? You can do that in the world. There's plenty of pressure there. But that's not what God wants. God wants our spirit fulfilled, the deep yearning of the spirit fulfilled, and that is done in Jesus Christ. Now let's go back to Peter. On Monday, we looked together at Matthew 16, where Jesus said to the disciples, Whom do men say that I am? And Peter spoke up, and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son, the living God. Then Jesus said he was going to Jerusalem, he would suffer, he would die at the hands of the chief priests and elders, and the third day he'd rise again. Well, Peter took him aside. And Peter said, be it far from you, Lord, you're not going to do that. Now, Peter was thinking of the fulfillment of the flesh. Why? Well, he wanted Jesus as an earthly king. Why? Well, he was one of the in-group. I mean, he was already. Peter, James, and John, they, have, they were big honchos. They had a special place in the kingdom. And if Jesus became an earthly king, that really put Peter in power. But if Jesus died, where would Peter be? So what Peter was saying to Jesus was totally of the flesh. Terribly of the flesh. Let's go on a bit. He was already with the in-group. Jesus became a king. Peter would have position. And then if Jesus did what he said, if he died, well, what about me, Lord? What are you going to do with me? 
I've already set my mind on what I want to do and what I want to be. And you're talking about dying. And what Peter was doing was waiting to gratify his flesh and not satisfy his spirit. Peter was being very natural. Jesus was talking in the spiritual. And you stop and think about it a minute. How many times have you heard a voice that was simply speaking to the gratification of your flesh? And what that voice said had nothing to do with the yearning of the Spirit. Your spirit yearns to be fulfilled in the Lord your God, to spend time with Him, to become like Jesus Christ. That's what our spirits want. And there is a pressure from Satan to do all sorts of other things. And some of us as God's people get caught up in that. We get taken up in that. And we go in every wrong way. Listen for the voice of God. Identify the voice of God. Know that first of all it will never conflict with his word. And secondly that usually what God says to you with a voice is conflicting with human reason. It is something that seems totally unreasonable. And you know that it's the voice of God. And thirdly. Is this clashing with my human desires, my fleshly desires? Time and time again when God speaks, what he says clashes with our fleshly desires. We want to do this and God wants us to do that. Because God is spirit and he's concerned with our spirit. And we live in a world that could care less about our spirit. The only thing it cares about is our flesh, gratification of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, and that's why I read you that list from Galatians 5. Listen carefully for the voice of God. Know in your heart that God is still speaking today. And because he loves you as he loved the people in the Old Testament, he wants you to hear his voice. He wants to be able to communicate with you. And remember what I said to you in the first part of this series. If we are to know God, he's got to communicate with us. How can we ever know him? How can we ever truly walk in the Spirit? If he does not ever communicate with us, communication is absolutely vital for the Christian believer. And some of us have never understood that, and some of us have never experienced that. God is speaking today. Learn to identify his voice. And as you learn, teach your children this too. Take them to the word of God. Show them what God is saying so that they too can identify his voice.